Hello and welcome back to Bookish and uh, welcome to another book review. Um, this week uh, I'm reviewing uh, Cantoras uh, by Carolina de Robertis. Uh, this book I believe was uh, on the list for the Booktube Prize. Uh, I don't know how far it made it. I don't think it made it very far. Uh, but I picked it up to read because I thought it sounded interesting and it sounded, uh, you know, uh, for me, uh, who, a reader whose primary background is in reading white male authors and who's only really recently uh, begun to diversify. Uh, my reading, it sounded like a book uh, that I would find interesting and it does come uh, from, uh, does pack with it quite a bit uh, of diversity. The basic premise of Cantoras is that there are five uh, lesbians who are living in Montevideo, Uruguay uh, during the repressive military dictatorship uh, that really ran that country for I believe a couple of decades. Uh, and ran it in the way military dictatorships do with very little personal freedom and in particular women uh, in kind of what I think uh, is depicted as kind of the, the macho society of uh, Latin American nations. Women were in even more danger. Women couldn't go uh, out at night without fear of being picked up by military patrols uh, and raped or assaulted uh, in other ways in which people were, you know, regularly picked up and imprisoned for long period of times or brief period of times based on politics in which the citizens of Montevideo uh, essentially uh, ratted one another out to the government um, uh, if they found their neighbors were, were saying things that sounded anti-government. It's a really repressive society in which these women lived. And of course, being lesbians, this was even more dangerous for them. Uh, and uh, and the ability to come out to live as they as the people they really were uh, was would put their lives in danger anyway these five women uh, two couples uh, one two couples which are kind of complicated and one uh, younger woman uh, decide to leave Montevideo they all become friends and connect in some way they decide to leave Montevideo and go out to an incredibly remote little fishing village uh, on the coast uh, of the Atlantic to spend some time and have a vacation and to kind of try to get away from uh, this repression. Um, I said the couples are complicated. Uh, two of the characters had been in, in a relationship with one another. As a matter of fact, in, in one of them's case, they've been their first real uh, lesbian relationship, but they're not together anymore and they're together. They have two other uh, women uh, that they're involved with and then this younger woman who is uh, the single woman of the group and they go out here and they have the kind of this have this incredible bonding experience in nature in which they can speak openly and they create this really incredibly powerful open bond in which anything that comes up between them can be dealt with in which every member of that five person group uh, in some ways supports and understands the other. And one of the things I found most interesting about that premise is that this is a premise, this idea of people going out in nature, of a small group of people going out in nature and bonding and becoming uh, close friends and having these incredible experiences which bond them together life for a lifetime. That premise is something we more oftentimes see, I think, in terms of fiction involving straight white men. So to use that same kind of premise, I think, for uh, the center of this novel about these five uh, lesbian lesbians is is incredibly inventive uh, and I thought it was an interesting choice uh, to make and on the whole I think that works there are great passages and parts of the book every time they go out to uh, by the way they go back to this uh, remote location over and over and the more they go the less remote and the more civilized it becomes, but each time they go, whether it's as couples or all five together or sometimes even singly, they have these experiences which in some way liberate them, in some way cause them to, to approach uh, their lives uh, differently. Uh, and I found lots of parts of the book and lots of parts of, this discussion of, of their stories to be incredibly compelling and entertaining. Um, you know, the, the author doesn't back away 
from dealing frankly uh, with sex between um, these women. Uh, even though it's not described in graphic detail, it, it's definitely there, and that can be, uh, you know, that that can be a, a really sexy kind of discussion. Uh, the women, you know, as they become friends and as their friendships mature, even if they're not necessarily uh, involved with one another, uh, they maintain an incredibly close, uh, friendly, supportive relationship that includes jokes and fights and ribaldry, and it's those relationships. I think really work and that is the the key to the book there are things about the book though that i don't think are as successful um, the author has five main characters and that's a lot that's five main characters who all have a backstory that's five main characters that she's going to follow over decades and so she has to create not only the backstory for all five of these characters but she has to then create the story moving forward for all five of those characters and where I think the book struggles is to make each of those five uh, narratives equally compelling. The backstory part, I think, works fine, but as you carry it forward and those five women uh, are less likely to be romantically involved with one another, their stories have a tendency to go in lots of different directions, some of which I found to be a little bit cliched and, um, one, tr and, and one of their life's trajectories ends up uh, tragically, and I thought that was that was fairly predictable. But every time that happened, there would be a chapter or a passage or a description of an event, which I thought kind of saved it. Uh, I felt like the book was always, you know, beyond like the first section, I felt like the book was always in danger of like failing. It was always kind of near the line of failing, and then it would pull itself back. Uh, and so for me overall, uh, it, was a, it was a success. Um, I thought it did a great job of giving you an impression of the atmosphere of that repressive uh, military dictatorship. Um, as is true with a lot of fiction, you know, oftentimes uh, I learn history by reading fiction. And while I don't necessarily take certainly the events described in the novel as historical facts, the setting is a historical fact. Um, and I believe uh, the author uh, lived in Uruguay. Uh, during that time period for part of her life, and so she certainly knew about that. And that atmosphere that is created, I think, is done incredibly is done incredibly well. So on the whole, I think that was successful. For me, the writing was also sometimes kind of hit or miss. Most of the time I thought it hit, but sometimes I thought it kind of, again, ran that line or, or flirted with that line between cliché and beauty, I thought when it was good, it was lyrical um, and interesting and visually stunning. And when it wasn't, it was a bit cliched. So I thought I'd just uh, read you uh, literally the first or f part of the first page uh, of the novel. So you just get an idea of what the writing's like because your opinion of the writing may be de very different from mine. So the cha first chapter is called Escape. The first time which would become legend among them. They entered in darkness. Night enfolded the sand dunes. Stars clambered around a meager slice of moon. They would find nothing in Cabo Polonio, the cart driver said. No electricity and no running water. The cart driver lived in a nearby village, but made the trip twice a week to supply the little grocery store that served the lighthouse keeper and a few scattered fishermen. There was no road in. You had to know your way. It was lonely out there, he remarked, glancing at them sideways, smiling to bare his remaining teeth, hinting, though he stopped short of asking any questions about what they were doing and why they were traveling to this of all places, just the five of them without a man, and it was just as well because they wouldn't have had, they wouldn't have had a decent answer. The trees gradually receded, but clumps of brush still reared their tasseled heads from, from the smooth slopes as if just being born. The horse-drawn cart moved slowly and methodically, creaking with the weight of them, hoofs muffled in the loose sand. They were stunned by the sand dunes, the vast life of them. Each traveler became lost in her own thoughts. Their five-hour bus ride down the highway already seemed a distant memory, dislodged from this place like a dream from which they had now awakened. The dunes rippled out around them, a spare landscape, the landscape of another planet, as if in leaving Montevideo, they had also managed to leave Earth, like that rocket that some years ago had taken men to the moon, only they were not men, and this was not the moon. It was something else. They were something else, uncharted by astronomers. So that's kind of uh, most of the first page and a little bit of the second page of the novel, and I think it gives you an idea, for me, it gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. Occasionally cliched, 
oftentimes quite kind of lyrical uh, and beautiful. And so my review, uh, my opinion about Cantoris is that it's a good book. It's a very interesting book. And I think it's a book that, you know, a lot of people uh, would enjoy uh, and would find to be uh, quite beautiful and moving. It's just that for me, it didn't always work. I don't do stars, so I'm just going to say it's a good book and leave it at that. Anyway, if you've read Cantoris or have an opinion about anything I said, always happy to see your comments in the comment section below. And as always, thank you for watching.